Spend enough time around DCS players and you're going to hear someone talk about notching in BVR. The notch is a real phenomenon and it's modeled in DCS, but I see a lot of comments taking its effectiveness to an extreme. I wanted to make a video explaining how it really works. So what are the notch's limits and what parts of the rumors are true? Keep watching to find out. The technical foundation of the notch is covered in this video, so if you haven't already, check it out. But in short, it's a technical limitation of radars with the ability to filter out noise caused by reflections from the ground. In DCS, we can see it demonstrated in this scenario. Here I have several targets flying at a lower altitude at a heading 90 degrees off my aircraft's heading. In other words, they are falling into a speed range where their closure velocity with my radar emitter is zero. And that happens to be the same as the terrain behind them. When they get to here, right in front of the nose, they vanish off the radar screen. We don't see the targets return until about 20 degrees to the side of the nose. So there's a narrow 20 degree window where the effect occurs. Outside of that, it doesn't happen. This is the radar's Doppler velocity notch. On some radars, this phenomenon only happens in the presence of ground clutter. In other words, when there is terrain behind the target. So when the radar is looking down, then there's a possibility for the target to get lost due to the Doppler notch effect. But when the radar is looking up and there's no backscatter from the terrain, then the target is clearly visible. Here we can see the same scenario from earlier, but using a different radar. These targets are flying several thousand feet above the radar emitter. This time, the targets don't disappear into the radar's Doppler notch. But if we rerun the scenario with the targets at a lower altitude, they do fade into the notch. So being above the radar in some cases will negate the benefits of the notch. Besides this being a very narrow window, there are some big challenges to overcome. One is that on a lot of fighters, the only indication of any adversary's position outside of the forward radar cone is going to be through this display, the radar warning receiver. This is not a precision instrument, and so you're likely to see a display where azimuth indications are limited to something like 16 positions around the circle. That comes out to 22.5 degrees between positions. We know that the window for the notch is around 20 degrees, and it starts on the attacker's nose. That gives an overlap that looks like this. You have 20 degrees inside the radar's filter and 22 and a half degrees of displayed notching on this side. That comes out to about 11 degrees where the RWR says you are in the notch when you're still visible on the enemy radar. Then you get about 11 degrees where it accurately depicts your position inside the notch. That's followed by around 9 degrees where you're still in the notch but your RWR says you aren't. Do you need to memorize these numbers? Nah. Just remember that the RWR may not be the best sensor to rely upon for getting into the notch. Something like this helmet mounted display could help here. There's a threat indicator and symbology that you can use to help line up your defensive maneuver. Both are precise enough to tell you when you're 90 degrees off the target. There are a lot of limitations to the notch and that can make it hard to pull it off. So why are so many people convinced that spoofing an enemy's radar is so effective? The answer is that they're seeing missiles defeated and are just attributing it to this shortcoming in the radar. Now it could just be a bug in the software, but a more likely answer is that the missile is being kinematically defeated. In other words, it's running out of speed before reaching the target. Let's take a closer look at this one. We know that a missile has a WES that is specific to certain parameters at the time of launch. You can watch this video for a detailed walkthrough on this. So when the missile is fired at a target that's here at the very edge of that WES, it should have enough kinetic energy to complete the intercept. But a rocket-powered missile only has thrust for a few seconds. After that rocket motor burns out, it can no longer generate more kinetic energy. It's just going to lose energy from this point until it either explodes or hits the ground. So if the target suddenly changes directions in response to the launch, then it needs to reorient for a new intercept point. This change in course is going to cause the little wings of the missile to adjust the airflow over them and temporarily increase the angle of attack. When the angle of attack increases, it moves the lift vector to the rear, which robs a missile of speed the same way it does for a fighter. We call this induced drag. And since the missile has no way of adding more thrust with its motor burned out, the end result is a smaller WES. Every change in direction will decrease the size of the WES. Going into a notching maneuver naturally causes an inbound missile to expend energy to adjust course. And if this puts the target outside the WES, it'll miss just like if it lost radar contact. There's even a brevity code for this. Notching means the aircraft is in a defensive position and maneuvering with reference to a threat. 
So if a pilot launched as soon as a weapon solution was presented, then it wouldn't take much maneuvering by the target to shrink the WES to an ineffective size. This very first point in time for a weapon solution is known as First Launch Opportunity, or FLO. And it's something you can integrate into your BVR plan. This kind of shot is low risk, but also the lowest probability for a kill. So it would fit in with launch and leave tactics, but that doesn't mean you can't use it for a launch and decide plan. During planning, a flight lead could tack this on to one of the lines of the briefing. So you might see something like this. Short skate, one shot per group, FLO. I explained skate and these BVR tactics in an earlier video if you want to learn more. On the other end of a spectrum, a flight lead could choose to hold shots. In other words, to wait for some point after first launch opportunity to take the shot. This way you're bringing the target farther into the WES to give the missile more room for maneuvering. The actual time to hold will be up to the flight lead. So it could be an arbitrary time, like 10 seconds, or it could be range based. So wait until 15 miles or some other brief range before shooting. Another alternative could be a cue from the aircraft's fire control computer. Since a lot of fighters calculate the range where an out can't defeat the missile, this specific range can be used for the hold. It's sometimes called the no escape zone or missile maneuver zone. If you want to know more about how these ranges are calculated, then check out this video. Just keep in mind the name may be misleading. There's usually one very specific maneuver that's used to calculate this zone. It could just be a simple out or a turn at a specific G. So it's possible that another maneuver by the target could still kinematically defeat the missile. Or a successful notch maneuver could also allow the target to escape. It all depend on how the fire control system was designed, but in most instances it should work as expected. Now there's one special area where a notch maneuver could be really useful, and that's when it's used against a semi-active radar homing missile. You might hear this referred to as a FOX-1 missile for its associated brevity code, and it's the fact that it requires guidance from the launch aircraft that can make it vulnerable to a notch. Air-to-air -air missiles follow an intercept course. So instead of going directly at the target, they fly at an angle toward a point in front of the target. This naturally creates a difference in radio velocity. So if the missile has its own onboard radar, then it'll be near impossible to defeat it with a notch attempt. It'll end up looking something like this. By the time this target entered my radar's notch window here, we can see the missile is already well off the angle of my jet's nose. When it activates its own radar, it's nowhere near the 90 degrees required for a notch but that's not how semi-active radar seekers work. They follow the radar illumination provided by the launch aircraft just like a cat chasing a laser pointer dot. The launch aircraft doesn't necessarily have to point at the intercept point to get the missile on target, so it can potentially be the subject of a notch defense. When this is done correctly, the defender will fade from the attacker's radar scope. This not only defeats the in-flight semi-active seeker, but it also temporarily denies situational awareness too. So the notch defense is particularly effective in an engagement where semi-active seekers are involved. This was a lot of info, so let's do a quick recap. Taking radio velocity close to zero can take advantage of a filter in Doppler radars to make a target disappear from the returns. In some radars, this only works in the presence of ground clutter, which is typically when the target is at a lower altitude. Though there are radars that have an upward looking filter too that's also susceptible. The notch only affects radars with the Doppler capability. This pulse radar, for example, doesn't have Doppler filtering. So when it's used in the same scenario as our earlier examples, we see the contacts don't disappear into a low velocity Doppler filter. But they can get lost in ground clutter, which we can see happening here. Zero velocity usually happens when flying perpendicular to the path of the radar beam. The filtering happens for around 20 degrees after this point. You can use sensors to tell when this happens, but not all are precise enough to clearly indicate when you're in the notch. Active radar guided missiles can be particularly difficult to defeat using a notching maneuver. But semi-active guided missiles are more susceptible. In either case, a notch maneuver can help to kinematically defeat the missile even if the radar never loses track. So I hope this video provided some insight into how the defensive notch maneuver works and what some of its weaknesses are. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.